Can you hear that? No, no, can you hear that? What you give me? Can you hear that bang, bang, now the gang? I can't hear it. We about to start off with that E40 for y'all. Bang, bang, hey! Bang, bang, That's all hey! Bang, bang, we in the Super Bowl. Bang, bang, we in the Super Bowl. Bang, bang, what you say, boo? Bang, bang, I say that's we in the Super Bowl. Bang, bang, we may we just go ahead and start. So thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> what we say from here? <laughs> I'm your host, Coach Gerald <laughs> Mitchell. Coming to you live from Sugar Hill, Georgia. <laughs> We've been brought to you by the Playbook. Follow us on Twitter at Playbook Elliott. All right, let's Thank go you. to the first segment today. Fan versus coach. Niners beat the Packers. So. Hey, get that Niners game going. Hey, we in the Super Bowl, coach. As a guy that's a fan of the Niners, it's like you would be happier that we in the Super Bowl. Well, we're after after well, weeks of doubting, well, that's a you doubting them. A weeks of not being sure about them, wouldn't you be happy they in the Super Bowl? But we're not going to win the Super Bowl. That, that's, that's the whole thing about it. Oh, we 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 we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that next week's show yeah. for predictions. Yeah. Well, we, we have to talk about it a little bit today, but go ahead. All right, overview of the game. What did you think of the game? Um, It was a good game. I mean, I, I you know, good for the night. Here's my thing. Mm -hmm. And this is why, and I know you don't want to talk about this yet or whatever the case may be. Well, I mean, we got it on the list for the next segment. I know, but this is a little bit. I, I got to say this up front so you know why uh -huh. I didn't like the game per se. Because I don't think that that is a typical football game. No, no, no. You know, no. Where, where your quarterback only throws the ball eight times. <laughs> right. Uh, what, who else seen an NFL game like that? I mean. Oh, I did. Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Joe Flacco. There, there you go. No Brian Tannehill. Uh, what, what, what's, what's, the, what's the combination here? <laughs> <laughs> quarterback suck. Okay, that, that's, what, that's what that common thread is right there. And that's what I'm saying. Same thing with Lamar Jackson. You know, we had games where he was doing the same type of thing. Right. He was six for eight for 77 yards. Right, right. I mean, threw the ball three times. In, and I'm telling you right now, and, and I love football and I love running. I got tired of watching that. I mean, I, I was like, okay, I'm, I don't want to see any more of this. You know, it's obvious they can't stop them from running. Right. And, and you know, if you're that kind of person that likes to see that, I don't. I mean, if you're going to run, 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 run. But, I mean, give me a play action pass every but, now and then. So they didn't give, they didn't give a chance. I, I just want to take a second and go to mm – -hmm. I'm going to speak to the Falcon fans directly. Come on. And a little bit of you. Okay. Isn't that what they wanted in the Super Bowl? What's Isn't that? that what the Falcon fans wanted in the Super Bowl? Yeah, we'll talk about what that. that. What we, that what we'll that's what that they too. wanted? We can talk about that, too. Also, we, we talk about it, too. And how many of us have sat on our couches, and I remember particularly when the hardball Super Bowl with mm -hmm. Kaepernick, and we'll get to that in a second, but if we sat on our couches, and then the quarterback throws the ball, and it's incomplete. Let's say whatever wrong, South whatever the, the case clock. may be. Stops the clock and everything. Yeah. And then we go, what do we go? We go, why we run throwing the ball? We just be running. We be killing them with the run all day, running. And again, guys, listen to me. There are a lot of teams, and a guy, a head coach of a football team, uh, Bill Ballard, told me years ago. He's a historian. Yeah. Uh, he's a history teacher. Right, right, right. He said, if you knew your history about the Super Bowl, the team with the most ground game, the most right. y'all, most yards on the ground, wins like ninety percent. Well, and, and that's my point is that. We finally got the game that did exactly what we yell on the couch about uh -huh. every single Sunday when someone's killing them with the ground game. Mm -hmm. We know. got it, and we go, well, well, not not you in particular, but a lot of people, all I heard from people in my tweets go, well, they just did that because they were trying to protect Jimmy Garoppolo. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, right or wrong, if you want to believe it or not, we'll get that set in a second. I, I know. I got you. The point is. If I can run the ball and win the game without my quarterback I'm having to do you. anything, and I agree, why would I not do it? The strategy was very good. So, I mean, and I feel you. I'm just telling you that for me, I wanted to see, and, and this is very selfish, very selfish of me, I wanted to see Jimmy Garoppolo do something other than hand the ball off because I need for him to make me a believer. And we've been, yeah. we've been on this all yeah, 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 yeah. Those of you Fans of the show, you know, I've been on this all season long about Jiggle Jimmy. I, that's what I call him. He looked like a porn star to me. But Jiggle Jimmy, I want to see him do something, something meaningful. You know, give, give me a give me a 15, it don't have to be a deep ball. Just give me a 15-yard laser across the middle to show me that if we need you to, you can. I didn't see it. Okay. And, and that's all I'm saying. The, speaking of lasers and 15 yards, are we ready? Are we ready to have a real conversation about Aaron Rodgers, yeah, guys? Yeah, I'm ready. Because I know every time I bring this up, I'm ready. I get everybody texting me, you all on the line, saying, oh, Aaron Rodgers, 
He's a bad man. He, oh, Aaron Rodgers. He's still I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and I've been saying this. I've been saying this for day. a long. I've been saying this for a while now. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is Jay Cutler with better coaching. I don't know about that. Oh, I know y'all going to hate me. I know you're going to hate me. I don't know about that. I, the, I, the, body, the body language, Jay Cutler. The leadership mm -hmm. is Jay Cutler. The arm is Jay Cutler. Yeah. He just has better coaching. Yeah, no. He's been put in a better situation. He had to sit three years behind a Hall of Famer he's a way, who was shown what not to do a lot of times. He's a way better athlete. Jay Cutler ain't never been able to scramble and throw the ball and do near the thing. Yeah, that, we'll get into some matters. I'm did. saying the fact of if he had – Aaron Rodgers, let's say the Niners would have drafted Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. and he went to those dysfunctional 49ers mm -hmm. back then. We would be looking at Aaron Rodgers like a bus. And we would be talking about all the things that we, we ignore now, his body language, his poor leadership. We will be bringing that up in, in a heartbeat. But because he, oh, look at that laser-like arm. Look at all his stuff and all the great coaching he had, all the great parts he had around him. Because this truth be told, Green Bay does great, do a good job of drafting mm -hmm. and bringing people in because they can't get free agents. Mm -hmm. They typically do a good job with the coaching hires. And he was allowed to sit three years behind a Hall of Famer, which I don't care if the Hall of Famer didn't help you. You pick up things from being behind a great player. I And literally, the guy – his one Super Bowl. Okay. We have one Super Bowl, and let's not forget his playoff uh, record. Not great. I think it's with eleven and eight. It's something that's very close. It's not as good as you all think it is. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not his, saying anything you're saying is wrong. Uh, hold on, let me. His road record is almost five hundred as a for career. But yet we keep saying how great he is, and I will say I've never took away his arm talent. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you put all the things together, the measurements together. The difference between him and Jay Cutler really is good coaching. Because when Jay Cutler was with Mike Shanahan and, and uh, the Broncos, Jay Cutler, we didn't hear all the problems about Jay Cutler until he got away from good coaching. Yeah. And now we're sitting here with Aaron Rodgers, and I'm looking at this all this talent. You did one ring, 500 on the road, and 11 for eight in the playoffs. Okay, just, just for the record, so everybody knows. You know, Jay Cutler, Vanderbilt alumni. <laughs> Not only that, Jay Cutler wore my number. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I didn't wear his number. Woo! He wore my number, just, just for the record. I mean, if y'all want to just keep let, you say we're going to be real, mm -hmm. let's be real. Mm -hmm. And Jay Cutler couldn't watch Aaron Rodgers draw <laughs> while the I'm going to tell you that straight up. I, I'm not feeling that. I mean, I think that, don't get me wrong. I think that uh, Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. is, is past his time. You know, you know, But I guess the point I'm trying to get to it is that, like, and, and I remember we interviewed Bradley Roby here on this show when Bradley was still with the Broncos. Mm -hmm. And I know people that have been a long-time viewers, you guys remember when we interviewed him. And I asked him a direct question about Peyton Manning's impact on the team because his skills had diminished. Yep. And what, do you remember what Bradley's answer was? Bradley's answer was saying how Peyton's leadership, his preparedness, all the stuff that was in that the, the intangibles in the locker room yep. is why the, the team and the, the rallied around him and did that. It had anything to do with it. I don't see I don't see that from Aaron Rodgers. Like this kind of game is one of those games where Aaron Rodgers' intangibles is what he needed to display to help his team win now other than when I think now it's just a better team, yeah. but to put on a better performance. Like where was the fire? Where was the aggression? Where is the hey, my O line, I need y'all to step this up. Hey coach, I need some like where was any of that moxie? Just let me say it. It just wasn't there, and it's yeah. never been there in this career. Let me career. say this. When I, when I think of Aaron Rodgers, I don't think about intangibles. I'm just, I'm just keeping right. it real with you. I mean, is he a great competitor? Yeah. Do I look at him as being one that's going to get the guys fired up and be a good locker room guy and all yeah. that? No. I, don't, I, I appreciate Aaron Rodgers for exactly what I see when he plays. Right. The fact that he is he's smooth. You know, he, he's he's comfortable. He he moves slides around in that pocket. He's smart with the football. He knows when to run. He always seems to know exactly where that line of scrimmage is. So that he'll be running full speed and start running sideways and then throw the ball. You know, right, right. those kind of things. I, I don't I don't think he's a good leader necessarily. I mean, he seems to me to be kind of more of a of a, a me me guy. Right. As far as being kind of selfish and to himself and you know, I can see him letting other people lead. And I think that maybe people expect him to leave because of his position and because of the fact that he's been in the league as long as he has. But I, I don't I don't look at Aaron Rodgers as being that guy. Speaking of that guy, <clears throat> is Matt LaFleur that guy for coaching for the Packers? Matt LaFleur, in my opinion, yeah. ain't that guy for coaching for anybody. I mean, that, that's, that's me. I mean, I don't, you know, all these new coaches, and we talked about this some last week, you know, and, and I just said it's time to move away and, and let some other folks mm -hmm. go.
but I don't know if we're letting necessarily the right folks coach. Now, I don't know who Eric Bieniemy is, but I know who he is. He played for Colorado years ago as a mm-hmm. running back. But uh, he's an offensive coordinator now for, for the Kansas, uh, City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. And people are saying he should be getting a shot to be a head coach. There's a lot of other people out there who should be getting shot at head coaches other than, you know, Flossie's mother's brother's sister's niece's <laughs> uncle's baby child and all that other kind of stuff, which is what's going on in, in, in the league as opposed to putting qualified people in those positions. I don't, I don't think that Matt LaFleur is that guy. I don't, I don't think either. he's going to be that guy. He has done anything to show me that he's any better than Mike McCarthy would have done if Mike McCarthy had been there. Me too. I think the biggest testament of a coach is halftime adjustments, and Matt LaFleur was Zero. one of the worst coaches in halftime Made adjustments. Uh, Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs beat the Titans. I mean, what do you think of the game? Well, I mean, it, it, you know, just what I thought it was going to be. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, I didn't care about it. whenever they were losing. Yeah. I, I was like, so? Because, you know, I knew that the Chiefs had that high-powered offense. <coughs> Everybody knew that was going to explode at one time. And uh, I'm just glad to see Fable, Fable, whatever name it is, didn't do something stupid like Bill O'Brien did. Uh, they try to go for a fake punt on his own 30 or whatever the case may be. He at least played the game. With, and, and, and Fable got me got my attention now. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's going to be a very good coach. Work. I mean, I think if he get a couple more pieces and whatnot and, and get him a team, he he's going to be – He I think he could be – one of the best coaches going forward. Well, I think one of the big storylines coming into this game was Derrick Henry, if he can continue that pace. I want to have a conversation not solely about Derrick Henry, but the conversation about the lead running back position in the, the, the league mm-hmm. versus the running back by committee. And I think I, this is a good counter to bring this up. We watched the 49ers go with a three-headed monster. I know Tevin Coleman went out earlier, but still three guys, Matt Breida, Coleman, and most of them, run and rack up those yards, and they've been doing that all season, mm-hmm. versus Derrick Henry. Once Derrick Henry was neutralized, they had no other answers at the running back position. Mm-hmm. So it, it can an argument be made now that it's more about the blocking scheme and finding the perfect runner for that blocking scheme, less about the runner being, let's say, excellent or a Hall of Famer? Well, well it's always been that argument because I, I used to watch Jamal Anderson run. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hate the Falcons anyway. But I, used to watch, I used to watch Jamal run. I used to tell people, I said, Listen, I love Jamal Anderson. Right, right. And, I mean, that joker is running that ball like crazy. But it ain't going to last. I mean, it, hey, that's Earl Campbell. Love it while you can. Yeah. He got about three, maybe four years of that. Mm-hmm. His body ain't going to stand up. I don't, care, I don't care who you are. I mean, those are grown-ass men. <laughs> With GAMs, what we call them. Grown-ass men out there playing that football game. And, I mean, they run extremely fast. And even if they dive into you, you might not feel it. Then you might shrug that thing off, stiff arm or whatever, run for a touchdown. You will be feeling that tomorrow. And you're going to feel that for about three, four, five weeks. And as you get older, it'll be three, four, five months. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm an old man. I stub my toe. And, I mean, it, it lasts for about, about three months. And as a football player, you can magnify that. You wonder why all smoke, football players smoke weed? The kind of stuff I'm telling you about is why they smoke weed, because of that pain. And Derrick Henry, y'all enjoy it while you can. Right, right. So I'm telling you right now, the way he runs the football, and he's got grown-ass men. Everybody say that with me, Sesame Street. Grown-ass grown man. Men. Well, you got grown-ass men running as fast as they can and just launching their bodies into you, trying to knock you down. And now they're trying to chop him down like a tree. Yeah. So everybody's trying to hit him in his thighs and in his ankles and knees and all that kind of stuff. He's only got about probably in this day and age about two and a half years of that. And, and he is going to be no good. Running back by committee. If you, if you plan on even having a strong running back position, right. it's going to take a running back by committee. And-